anyone. So I'll give you the specific one where late, late at night, on occasion, I've eaten things that I really regret eating. Also, also another one that I'm, I'm trying to work hard on is I can be very messy with when I travel. So my, my hotel room can look like a mess and I don't like that about myself. And I don't know why I do it, but it's almost like you talk about being unconscious. I'm clearly not thinking about it, but that's part of the problem. And it's the same with the bloody sugar at midnight, eating, ordering things that are, and then feeling instant guilt 10 seconds after I put it in my mouth. Well, uh, well, it may be that on some level, well, you could actually be addicted to the guilt, not to the sugar. And so you, you return to the same emotional state that allows that action to reoccur. So if you said, let me decide how I am going to act, what I'm not going to do, and you rehearsed it, the research on mental rehearsal says your brain will look like you already did it. That you'll be so present, the brain won't know the difference between what you're imagining and what is real. The brain will begin to change to look like the experience has already happened. Now, you're priming your brain for that behavior. Keep rehearsing it. Rehearsing it how? So give me... Well, so I play mentally, mentally rehearsing, mental rehearsal is one of these great ideas in neuroscience where you can actually install circuits in your brain, right? So everybody has done this. Musicians do it. They're playing a song in their mind all the time. Athletes do it. They're always going over their moves. Uh, dancers do it. Actors do it. Uh, so many people rehearse mentally what they're about to do. And when they do that, they actually prime their brain. They actually can change their brain and change their body just by thought alone. Physiologically change. Physiologically change. You can take a group of people that never played the piano before and divide them into two different groups and do functional brain scans on both groups. One group, they'll come for two hours a day for five days and they'll practice these one-handed scales and chords. Now, you learn something new, you make new connections in your brain, you get some instruction, you get your body involved, when you get your body involved, you're gonna have an experience. You pay attention to what you're doing and you repeat it over and over again. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. You're gonna to begin to install new circuits in the opposite side of your brain, that's, that's common. You do the scan at the end, you see those actual physical changes. You take those people, uh, the other group, and you ask them to close their eyes without lifting a finger. Have them mentally rehearse those scales and chords, and at the end of five days, they grow the same amount of circuits in their brain as the people who actually physically demonstrated the act. In other words, they were so present with what they were doing, the brain did not know the difference between the real life experience and what they were imagining. The brain was physically changing to look like they already experienced it, they already did it. So now, you take those people, never played the piano before, they've just been mentally rehearsing for two hours a day for five days, you set them in front of a piano, and they could actually play those scales and chords. Why? Because they primed their brain for that behavior. So then if you're gonna prime your brain for a new behavior, whether you're the CEO of a company, whether you're a parent, uh, whether you're learning something, the more you rehearse it mentally, the more you prime your brain and body for the act. So you could actually practice rehearsing how you're going to change in your life. And if you keep doing it enough times, your behaviors will match your intentions automatically because you have the mind installed to do it. If you don't have the mind installed to do it, you'll go back to the same past behavior. So I play through that scenario of making the decision differently. Exactly. And rehearse it in your mind until it feels right. Until you feel like I could actually do that and go from start to finish without losing your attention. And so that it gets easier each time you do it. It makes sense then you're, you'll, you'll actually do it. And, and then if you said, okay, enough of this guilt. <laughs> I've, I've felt enough of it. I don't like feeling that way. I could actually break the conditioning of that emotion in my body. Can I condition my body? Can I teach my body to feel something differently? What would be the feeling that I want to feel if I was able to do it? Would it be worth? Would it be self-love? Would it be freedom? Would it be joy? Let me teach my body emotionally what a future could actually feel like before it happens. If you keep doing it over and over again, you're going to start making more of those chemicals and it's going to become easier for you to do it. It's going to become familiar to you. And that's exactly what meditation is, to become familiar with an old self, to know thyself, to become so conscious of that unconscious self that you don't go unconscious to that self. And how many times do we have to forget until we stop forgetting and start remembering? That's the moment of change. What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? Let me become familiar with those. What behaviors do I want to demonstrate? What would greatness do? What would love do? and actually rehearse a greater, a greater way. Rehearse it enough times so that you could actually step into that footprint. Teach your body emotionally that there's another way to feel and do it over and over again, it'll become familiar to you. And so the model of change is unlearning and relearning. 
It's breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing a new self. It's pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. It's unfiring and unwiring, refiring and rewiring, deprogramming and reprogramming, losing your mind and creating a new one, unmemorizing emotions that have been stored in the body and then reconditioning the body to a new mind, to a new emotion. Turns out if you teach people how to do that, in seven days, you can see very profound biological changes if they immerse themselves into the experience. And what do those biological changes look like? <clears throat> well, um, so we run week-long events um, around the world. And I think it's so important to do events uh, in person uh, with community uh, because it's a flock, it's a herd, it's a school, uh, it's a collective. And so uh, that exact process in seven days, uh, we... Uh, take people through a very immersive experience and we do functional brain scans or fMRIs or quantitative EEGs before they start the event and then we at the end of seven days we look at their brains at the end of seven days and there are dramatic changes in the way their brain works very significant changes some of them are really outstanding changes we uh, put uh, teach people how to create more heart coherence when you feel anger when you feel frustration when you feel impatience when you feel resentment your heart beats out of order. When you feel gratitude, when you have kindness and care, when you feel love for life, your heart beats in a more orderly fashion. You can actually train somebody to get good at feeling that way. And we, we use that and we see people at the end of seven days be able to regulate uh, their heart much better. And it's a function of really how soon or how slow we age. We take uh, blood and we measure 2,882 different metabolites in, in a person's blood. And at the end of seven days, we measure again and i can tell you that if you're a novice meditator really never meditated before kind of your first event uh, and you go through that seven day process at the end of seven days there's so many biological changes that are taking place in the collective in the community not just one not just two the majority of people and i mean a significant majority of people suggesting that their body literally is living in a new environment in, in a new life and there are chemicals in their bloodstream in terms of information that wasn't there prior to the event. In other words, some way, without taking any drug, <laughs> without any, taking any exogenous substance, uh, without changing their diet, without changing their lifestyle in any other way except going through this process, eating the same foods that they typically eat, that at the end of seven days, there's chemistry, there's biology that suggests that somehow their biology is changing significantly. Um, we measure gene expression. Uh, I can tell you that you can change your gene expression in seven days. Uh, we measure the microbiome, and um, once again, seven days, there are dramatic changes in the microbiome, uh, and the mind somehow is making uh, significant and, and effective changes in our, in our body. So um, our research is pretty outstanding because um, a seven-day uh, intervention uh, that's producing these effects, uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of drugs that, that are as effective. And we've discovered that the nervous system makes a pharmacy of chemicals right now that works better than any drug. That's what we've discovered. And it's all within you.